today I would like to focus on the main challenges related to the funds transfer pricing. We know that there is quite a lot of new things happening in the in the banking regulations. First of all, there is the new strongly uh, heavy regulated landscape. Um, I am referring to the IRBB regulatory requirements, to the liquidity, intraday liquidity requirements, to the challenges in the capital requirements uh, rules. And all this has obviously the impact on the FTP. I would say that the main impact will be related to the LIBOR transition. As we know, the LIBOR, there is the strong convenience in the market, uh, strong belief in the market that uh, LIBOR will cease to exist and it will be um, completely replaced by the overnight rate. In different countries, it will be unsecured or unsecured rate uh, by the main tenors which are underlying underpinning LIBOR will will be changed and will be replaced by this overnight rate, which will be um, uh, will be the under, will be underlying the whole FTP structure and the impact and will have the impact on pricing of products pricing. So first of all, um, let's start with several things which I would like to introduce to you before. So as I said, you can have my details on the left side of the presentation after the webinar. Uh, it is a part of this uh, of this uh, package. You will get the presentation, you will get some articles on FTP and you will get some exercises so it is all uh, it is possible to download everything and uh, if you have any uh, any questions uh, do not hesitate to write me an email and I leave with to you my email details <clears throat> on the presentation uh, what is the purpose of this webinar today. So I have quite a lot prepared and we have only one hour and a half. Uh, so I will need to go. The objective is to mm, provide you with the overview of the different aspects of FTP. And by these aspects, I mean, first of all, we will tackle the liquidity transfer pricing aspects. Uh, we will tackle the strategic implication of FTP. Uh, this is mainly for the um, shaping and steering of the banking book through the FTP tool. Uh, we will be talking about behavioralization concept and adjustments in the FTP rate. And by this, I mean, for example, under the liquidity transfer pricing, I would like to walk you through um, how we can um, amount, uh, how we can calculate the contingent liquidity risk, how we can charge for liquidity under LCR, how we can, uh, how this uh, liquidity transfer pricing can be done in the overall risk strategy mm, and how it takes into account this overall uh, risk strategy, liquidity risk strategy of the bank. Uh, and this implementation, strategic implementation of FTP, uh, we will focus on the strategy, on the incentivization, and how FTP is viewed from the profitability side and not only pricing, but also profitability and how it can incentivize the correct structure of the banking book. And the last um, thing which I would like to show you today is, uh, as I said, the behavioralization concept, but uh, here we will be talking about uh, statistical maturity versus contractual maturity, uh, how we can reflect the behavioral characteristics of various instruments and contractual profiles of the transactions and liquidity asset buffer. Uh, so uh, is it okay to allocate the cost to the deal or to the portfolio level? Uh, also, we'll be talking about uh, term funding and uh, quite a bit um, about uh, best against uh, good and bad practice in the FTP. So uh, let's start. First of all, 
what is the funds transfer pricing process? Um, funds transfer pricing is a term, definitely a term, used to describe the sum of policies and methodologies, uh, which bank applies to charge for the use and credit the generation of funding and liquidity. So as such, it is the exercise of allocating the cost of liquidity between business units at the same firm. So you can think about it like you have the three main participants in the whole FP process where in the middle you can see um, this central unit which acts as bank within a bank, which can be ILM or Treasury Department, Asset Liability Management or Treasury Department. Uh, why or? Because it depends on the, where ILM sits, if it sits in Treasury, so definitely it will be here. Um, and we have the business units, we have the asset side, which is responsible for granting funds to lenders, and we have the deposit side, which is responsible for gathering funds from depositors. And all those three participants are the main uh, stakeholders in the FTP framework. So as such, we can speak here uh, about the bank within a bank, so the central unit, which will be providing funds to the asset center and will be gathering funds from the liability center. And this process, as we know, is the main process uh, which the banks um, are, are, are doing in the society, uh, which the bank are responsible for, is to provide lenders with funds and to gather the uh, funds from depositors which have the excess money and want to save and to provide uh, money to people or companies, medium-sized companies or large investors. He want to, he need funds and this excessive funding from the depositors can be uh, used in the market and invested into some in some projects so this important banks uh, this important roles which banks are doing um, are acting in the modern economy not so modern because banks are existing uh, since very early uh, time. So here we are talking about the quite sophisticated sophisticated process when we are entering into this machine and trying to split it into details and have this process accounted for by FTP rate and by FTP curve and by FTP methodology. So what, what do I mean when I'm saying that there are three participants which are involved in the FTP process? So first of all, Imagine that the central unit, which is here in, um, in the uh, blue box, is the LM unit, which provides funds to asset center and charge for those funds the FTP rate. So some price. FTP rate is the price of those funds provided to the asset center. In change, the ILM is getting has is getting funds from deposit center and is paying them for those funds FTP rate. But obviously, as in this example, we see that the client is asking for two years loan, which at the price of 4%, this is the all in price of this loan, 4%, the client is paying 4% to the bank. And depositors put the money in the bank uh, in form of the three month deposit and is getting for this savings 1%. So the remuneration, those deposits are yielding 1%. But what is happening in the middle, in between? So the ILM is paying the FTP rate to the deposit center and the FTP is the fair market rate. It is based on the very exact 
calculation and very precise rules. So there is no arbitrage here. It is fair, it is transparent, it is market price of those funds. So imagine what, what do I mean when I'm saying that it is the market price of those funds? It is exactly the price which the opportunity cost, which the bank, the bank would need to, uh, to pay to the external uh, funds provider if it would like to fund itself through these funds. So, for example, the bank would like to uh, to fund uh, um, through three years issuance, uh, then it is exactly in the market the quotation of the three years issuance bonds. And in this case, this FTP rate is based on the one FTP curve. Um, it is not always the case that there is only one FTP K, uh, curve, but for now, uh, for the simplicity purposes, let's imagine that we have this one FTP curve with different tenors and every tenor has its own price, its own rate, and is one, is not, it, it is quoted every day uh, by the ILM unit or is somewhere, somewhere in the bank. It's clear, it's known to everyone. And in the same time, as you can see in this uh, scheme, the asset center is uh, charged the FTP rate for two years loan. And in this case, the FTP rate for two years funding is 1.31%. Consequently, the asset center is left with the difference between the client rate of two years loan, which is 4%, and FTP rate, which it had to pay to the ILM. So the difference between 4% and 1.31%. And this spread is known as a commercial spread, which is 2.69% in this particular example. And it is fixed. It is closed. It is realized. It is realized for this particular transaction. It will not change anymore. And it is exactly... Mm, crystallized. So the asset center can tell that they have managed to earn 2.69% for two years transaction. On the liability side, we can see that the difference between the cost of funds, which needs to be uh, paid to depositors, which is 1%, and the internal FTP rate, which deposit center will get from ILM, will be paid from ILM, which is 0.32%, the difference is negative and is minus 0.68%. Why? Because the price, the cost of deposits uh, in the market is higher than the FTP rate. So the deposit center here has negative NIM, negative net interest margin, NIM. Um, in this situation, obviously, it's not a good situation. Uh, it means that the product, this particular product in this example, uh, which earns the negative NIM, is value destroying for the bank. So the banks will need to assess the profitability of this, uh, of this product and ask the question if they want to change the strategy and replace the product uh, for another product which is much which is more profitable because this product is not profitable and consequently what happened uh, again here we have this margin crystallized this is known like a commercial spread for the liability center uh, which is negative but this is the spread and Let's see what is going on within the ILM unit. So ILM has been paid, has received the FTP rate from asset center. So we see that on the asset side, it is 1.31% or in terms of FTP rate for two years funding. And it has to 
pay to the deposit center 0.32%, which is the FTP rate for three months investment in the market. So there is definitely the positive spread in ILM. The spread is equal to the difference between two years funding 1.31 and three month investment 0.32 and is equal to 0.99%. But obviously, we can see that meanwhile in the business unit, we don't have any maturity mismatching at the level of business units. We see that on the asset side, we have two years and they are charged cost of two years funding. So they are locked. There is, there is no uh, maturity transformation within the asset center. And the same happens in the deposit center. So there is three months investment against three months deposit and there is no maturity transformation. But there is maturity transformation, quite huge maturity transformation between two years funding uh, and three months investment on in the ILM. So ILM will be left with this maturity transformation Maturity transformation means that the maturity of asset is higher than the maturity of liabilities. And uh, it means that uh, there is definitely some liquidity gap. There is some exposure to liquidity risk, but not only. Mm, there is also the exposure to the interest rate risk because the frequency of repricing of asset is much lower than the frequency of repricing of liability. Here, the liability is repriced on the quarterly basis. So every three months, the bank is subject to the repricing risk. And on the asset side, there is fixed rate for two years. So the rate is locked for two years. And this is typical repricing risk exposure and typical maturity transformation. Now, uh, quite um, many times I'm asked by, uh, by audience, um, why I see ILM, do I see ILM as a profit center or do I see ILM as a service center? And if LM should take any positioning on the interest rate curve or in terms of also a liquidity strategy uh, in terms of uh, funding a strategy of the bank. Um, I think that um, it is the healthy maturity transformation, uh, well managed position in terms of a structural liquidity interest rate risk or structural liquidity risk is good for the bank. Uh, it doesn't mean that the bank is trading or is using the depositors' money to trade because absolutely it's not allowed. They are uh, quite strict interest rate risk limits, there are quite strict liquidity limits, which um, needs to provide to, uh, to avoid this excessive exposure in terms of economic value of equity um, or in terms of the um, structural liquidity ratio. So definitely um, there is the limit which cannot be exceed in terms of, uh, of the exposure to, to the treasury risks. Um, there is also the regulatory risk, uh, the regulatory metrics, which needs to be uh, which needs to be monitored. We know that there is NSFR, for example, which is typical metrics for the maturity transformation, which avoid that there is too much uh, non-liquid asset which are funded by volatile funding. This is exactly what is meant by net stable funding ratio. Uh, so all this needs to be maintained. And uh, I'm just saying, I'm not promoting trading. I'm just saying that if LM manages well exposure to IRBB and exposure to the, uh, in terms of the funding strategy of the bank, there can be some positive spread, which is gained by the activity uh, from ILM, coming from ILM. In this case, um, there is the positive spread of 0.99%. Um, what is um, happening um, quite often 
in the banks, um, first of all, international big institutions, they consider that ILM, uh, FTP is simply the uh, right pocket, left pocket activity. And it is, um, it doesn't matter if, for example, uh, one business unit um, gets a slightly higher price than another business unit, because it's all the same. The bank is one only. So, uh, uh, NIM is for the bank is the same. So if the allocation, there are any differences in the internal allocation, um, by the end, the total NIM for the bank is the same. Um, I f uh, strongly disagree with this statement uh, because I think that FTP is not a simply left pocket, right pocket in, in this sense that we are moving the profit from one business unit to another. So left pocket, right pocket is only the meta metaphoric phrase, which is um, ex which is uh, just emphasizing this uh, this this thoughts. I think that FTP is extremely powerful tool that if it has uh, it is well managed it can uh, really uh, help the bank to achieve the strategic uh, objectives and to reach the strategy which the bank uh, has designed for itself and i think that um, it is also a very important tool to transparent transfer risk in this sense, market and liquidity from business to central unit. Uh, what I do, I mean by this, uh, if we come back to the previous slide, we can see important, very important point. At this stage, the business units are completely immune to the exposure to the liquidity and interest rate risk. The all exposure has been transferred from the business units to the central unit which is acting as a bank within a bank and which is ILM. It is ILM uh, which needs to manage all financial risk exposure. And please remember here, we don't have only the IRBB exposure in terms of repricing uh, risk or mm, uh, yield risk. We have here also the exchange uh, FX risk. Uh, we have the basis risk, all those stuff which needs to be managed by ILM department. So uh, those risk has been transferred to the central unit. And this is the important, important tool where the asset and liability center can focus on delivering the commercial strategy for the bank so they can focus on the relationship with the client. They can focus to maximize the profitability of this unit. At the same time, this commercial margin is not volatile. It's fixed at the inception of the transaction. And the ILM has to make sure that it manage all the inherited risks which has been created by the business unit. So again, I repeat, it is not a left pocket, right pocket. It is a very strong mechanism to transform risk from business unit to central unit. And it is supposed to benefit a bank. As I said, uh, FTP is powerful. It can uh, deliver the business strategy of the bank, but at the same time, it can, if not well managed, it can destroy it completely the value of the bank. So it is important, the transparency, the uh, understanding of the underlying principles, the good FTP policy and good FTP practice guide are imperative in order to derive the strategic strategic tool and strategic objective of the bank. So uh, it is definitely not um, the tool to hide underperforming products. And when I say this, I mean the situation where, for example, um, the picture for asset Imagine for the asset for one trans a particular asset class is like this. The asset is gaining 4%, is earning 4%, uh, 
And uh, meanwhile, the FTP, which it is paying, is instead of 1.31, is 5%. This is only the example, illustrative example. And the difference, there is negative NIM for the, uh, for the business unit. And we are still, um, we are hiding this, um, this uh, non-performing product through acknowledging uh, the lower FTP charge. So the asset center will be paying lower FTP, F, FTP rate oh, from the other center, from the other side, we can focus on the deposit. We see here that this deposit uh, is uh, spread is negative. So definitely deposit center is not making money with this product because there is the negative uh, spread. But at the same time, imagine that the ILM gives to this center instead of 0.32% gives 1.5. So we see that the, <clears throat> there is the positive sp spread for the, de the deposit center instead of negative, even though the FTP rate, uh, the correct, the fair FTP rate is 0.32 for three months funding. So this is what is meant by <clears throat> hiding the underperforming products. Uh, it is also not the tool to maximize the ILM own trading account. Quite many times, given that the principle of um, FTP is not clear to every single participant, um, there is the tendency to um, not communicate uh, the marks up on the FTP rate and consequently, um, the business unit are not aware from where this FTP rate they are paying or they are getting is how it's built, how it's calculated, what is in. And all this is because there is no transparency and lack of transparency. Instead, for example, there's in some cases, even uh, I have seen those cases in the market, um, the ILM is charging some markup to the asset or um, charging some negative, uh, some markdown for the liabilities uh, without on the deliberate basis, uh, without any explanation or without any solid argument why uh, it has been done. So it's very important that there is the transparency. And please remember from this part of the presentation, transparency and understanding um, of the FTP uh, rate is one of the most important thing in order to deliver the good strategy and have the FTP right. Otherwise, we are risking to destroy the, the bank. Instead of helping, supporting the strategy of the bank, we are risking to destroy the value of the bank. So again, um, here we can see the typical maturity transformation uh, and the exposure at the business unit, uh, which is none. You can see from the interest rate risk perspective, you don't have any exposure. It is immune to the interest rate risk. It is also immune to the liquidity risk because on in this particular case, we are talking about the asset center. The asset center uh, has um, received the 6% from the client for the five-year uh, loan. Uh, instead, it was charged 3% by the ILM and for five years loan, five-year funding. And there is the positive difference between uh, the all-in price and FTP. So we see the 3% NIM, which is gained by asset center. Uh, from the other side, uh, if we don't do this split at the bank level, what, what do we see? We see that this loan has been founded by one year funding at 2%. So we can definitely see that this one, uh, one year, 2% at one year 
and against uh, assets which are five years funding or loan at 6%, gives, provides the, to the bank the positive name at 4%. But if we split it, we see that from the business unit, we have only 3%. Instead, the ILM unit or FTP book, uh, let's call it FTP book in this example, or ILM, which has managed the uh, provided funds to the business unit and has managed uh, to, to find those funds in the market at the certain price has gained a positive NIM of 1%. So there is the maturity transformation uh, which you can be seen on the FTP book. And uh, there is the volatility of cost of funds curve, which we can see because we don't know what will be the um, cost of funds uh, in one year's time. So there is the volatility of cost of funds curve in four years money terms, uh, four years uh, term. Uh, we don't know what will be the cost of funds uh, after one year. So this is where the volatility of cost of funds is coming from. And as you can see, there is the positive maturity transformation because asset has the longer uh, maturity than liabilities. And at the business unit, everything is matched, is closed, is immune. So the, mm, the optimal situation is when the business unit is immune to any financial risks. It is not always possible. So already I can hear some of you, um, you are shouting, uh, no, it's not possible to transfer all, all risks from business unit 